My Hero Academia, Season 7, Episode 14, Slash 152, together with Shoji, delivered a powerful message and showed off that even episodes that are supposedly filler can be done exceptionally well. Let's talk about it. All right, guys, Brent here back for Geek Variants. Cover all things Marvel, DC, Lord of the Rings, anime, gaming, Star Wars, and more. This time, my hero academia. And friendly reminder to those who are new to the channel or just checking out this video for the first time from us. We have our 1,000 subscriber giveaway going on till tomorrow, August 25th. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you are a U.S. resident over the age of 18. And you go to our community post page on our YouTube and enter there. You will be able to eligible to enter a couple and uh, get a couple amazing prizes so go ahead and do yourself a favor it's free and you will be entered to win any potential prizes we have coming your way so be sure to go ahead and check that on out but look here's the episode and the content which you are curious about this entire episode was battled entirely around two main things one the villains are trying to get Kurogiri back because his quirk is just so dang powerful that he'd be able to change the tide of the war in a huge manner. So the fact that he was already able to take off the board by the heroes, huge win for him. The other thing that was going on within this battle that people really needed to talk about, this is the battle of the underbelly of the hero society as a whole. My Hero Academia... Sure, their world has taken significant strides to get over and achieve many great things. However, there's still a very, very dark underbelly to everything that's going on here. Being a heteromorph in this society makes you an outcast. It makes you an undesirable. It makes you an unwanted. It makes you tons of things that literally from jump, you have to overcome through trial, tribulation, and error over time, again, and again, and again. And usually you have to rely upon the kindness or the overall heart of somebody else who is just a regular member of society, someone who's got the ability to stand up for you to ensure that you even have a fighting chance to be a someone or a something in this society. And Class 1A is the great way, greatest way of exemplifying that exact moment in time. They have several heteromorphs in their class. Not once, not twice, not three times has there been anybody who has gone out of their way, other than Monoma, who's gone ahead and apologized for his mistake, even though we still don't like him as a character because of his preferred nature. At least I don't. Um, he is the only one that we can recall that has ever made any comments about anyone being a heteromorph in any kind of a negative light. He referred to Shoji, who we got a very good introduction to on the depth of the character in this episode, and called him Octopus Arms. And sure, Shoji has a quirk where he's got an interesting amount of arms. He could do a lot of cool and unique and interesting things with them. Got a lot of adaptability to what's going on here. And then also we had anima in this episode and anima is someone who's got the power to control animals and the larger his horn gets on the front of his head the more powerful he is and the more he's able to resonate and connect with certain animals in time a lot of people were speculating that anima was the person who was causing the class 1a to have a traitor turns out obviously now that we have that whole arc for the most part set beside us he was proven to be absolutely innocent People were speculating he was controlling the principal and making moves to where there were just open gaps because the principal is, in fact, an animal. There's no other way around it. But at the same time, you know, the school was able to figure out their, who the traitor was and move on from this. Shoji is basically shown all the traits of how someone who suffered as much as Spinner has is able to overcome the hatred that's going on in their hearts. Spinner has been an outcast from society for who knows how long. Until the League of Villains showed up, he had nobody and nothing. No one wanted to be around him. No one wanted to connect with him. It wasn't until he met Shigaraki where things really started to click. 
Shigaraki, for all of his faults and flaws, was genuinely able to reach out and be like, hey, you know, you want to play this phone game with me? And they became friends over a very, very simple matter. And all it took was one small act of kindness. And now Spinner is going out of his way to not only join a League of Extraordinary Villains. Sorry, I couldn't get resist that temptation. But no, he could resist to join this League of Villains. Go out there and now get two new quirks added on to everything that he already had from All for One. And now has the ability for body bulking and scale mail. So he is able to amplify his size and amplify his toughness so instead of just being you know a smaller individual he packs a heck of a wallet now he is someone that we need to be concerned about because he is just too dangerous and too durable to be left out there he has evolved so to speak using the hatred that has been in his heart to really push himself to new height he's gotten plus ultra in the wrong direction if that makes sense. And on top of that, then we have Shoji, who went through the exact same thing. Shoji was someone who was hated by his entire village. He was not born like his parents. He was born differently. He was an outcast. And people tried to do a blood purification ritual on a child. He ended up getting scars directly all across here and directly all across his neck because of the very same people he was raised with, grew up with, and was just hanging out with through no fault of his own. Still, despite everything going on, he goes out to the river to either cry or really think about his life choices, potentially make some catastrophic decisions. He sees a young girl basically drowning and being swept away in the river, and he decides to act. He decides to act on the kindness in his heart and saves her, causing significant damage to himself, and that's where he got some of the cuts that he ultimately had on his face. The ones on the neck, I don't believe were from that same exact instance. He goes ahead and saves that little girl, and that little girl's like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. People are going to view you entirely differently. You have all the scarring on your face. I know you're a good person, but now you kind of fit the monster label that everyone else is throwing out upon you. I'm so sorry. Shoji wears them like a badge of honor. And throughout this episode, he was able to use his quirk and his power and his heart to really connect with this mob. And him and Anima together were able to overcome a lot of the hatred that's going on here. Because the heroes were down, to, it was 200 heroes to 1,000 villains. And this mob, through sheer numbers, was starting to change the tide of things until Shoji and Anima used their heart and their quirk and their skills to go ahead and team up with present Mike and really make a significant push to try and save everyone's hearts and minds. And you can see throughout the episode, the tug of war that was genuinely happening with people's hearts and souls, because these heteromorphs have been treated terribly by society and they want a significant change, but they're starting to see that because of Shoji and Anima, maybe you can make changes through a different manner where you can still get the result that you're ultimately looking for and that ultimately just seizing it using violence is not always the correct answer because sometimes violence will only beget violence. Sometimes if you're able to reach someone's heart and really speak to the core issue at hand, you're able to overcome certain stipulations and certain things in a rather unique manner in their society. Wishing all the best for them. Next week, we're going to see more of the fight as Spinner ultimately was able to survive a couple of series of blows from Shoji and President Mike and is now in the hospital. And President Mike will have to hold him off from getting to Kuriguri. I've been Brent for Geek Variants. Be sure to hit that lovely red subscribe button. If you have hit that button before August 25th, we have a community post up. Go ahead and enter yourself in to win a couple amazing prizes if you are over the age of 18 and a U.S. resident. I've been Brent for Geek Variants. I'll see you in the next episode.